Hello students of class 10. Today we will start with a very interesting topic that is factors promoting the growth of nationalism and foundations of the Indian National Congress. The East India Company of England was started by some British merchants. In 1600 AD, Queen Elizabeth gave it the exclusive right to the trade to trade with the East. In 1612 AD, the company set up its first factory in Surat, subsequently established trading settlement in Madras, now Chennai, Bombay, now Mumbai, and Kolkata, now Kolkata, and trade yielded enormous profits and the company became rich. It gradually began to interfere in the internal affair of India. Political powers that prevail in India helped the British to establish their rule in India. The slow but steady decadence of the Mughal Empire created chaos and anarchy. Many independent regional kingdoms fell to realize the growing strength of the European trading companies and the threat they, that they posed. In course of time, the British succeeded in colonizing India. Territory expansion became the keynote of the company's India policy. They designed policies to serve British interests. The welfare of the common people was never a priority of a priority with the company. They misrule and deprive the common people of their right. So the East India Company of England was started by some British merchants in India and in sixteen hundred AD Queen Elizabeth gave it the exclusive right to trade with the East. And in sixteen twelve AD the com the company set up its first factory in Surat and trade yielded enormous profits and the company became rich during at that time. So in course of time the British succeeded in colonizing India and territorial expansion became the keynote of the company's India policy. And the company designed policies to serve British interests, but they misrule and deprive the common people of their rights. Your main objective were to increase profits from trade, to increase the profitability of the territories it held in India, and to strengthen its hold on India. By 1856 AD, the British became the masters of the whole of India. They deprived the Indians of their political rights, annexed the Indian states, and followed the policy of economic exploitation. The Indians revolted against the English in 1857 to free themselves from the foreign rule, but they fell miserably. The Indian rulers fought bravely but suppressed with an iron hand. Though the revolt of 1857 failed, it produced deep and far-reaching effects on the social and political life of India. So here is the main objectives of the company, that is, to increase profits from trade and to increase the profitability of the territories it held in India and to strengthen its hold on India. By 1856 AD, the British became the masters of the whole of India, that means British rule over the whole of India and they uh, take away the Indians of their political rights and also they annex the Indian states and follow the policy of economic exploitation. But the Indians revolted against the English in 1857 to free themselves from the foreign rule but they fell miserably. miserably. And, uh, and Though the revolt of 1857 failed, it has created deep and far-reaching effects on the social and political life of India. Therefore, the second half of the 19th century witnessed the political consciousness and rise of national movement. Struggle for freedom, it was carried on by the National Congress. So, by the second half of the 19th century, it witnessed the political consciousness and rights of national movement and also the struggle for freedom. So it was carried on by the Indian National Congress. Nationalism means devotion, love and patriotic feelings for one's own nation. It is a feeling of political consciousness and unity among the people of the state. Factors responsible for the rise and growth of nationalism The British followed a policy of economic exploitation. The economic system was adjusted to the needs of the people in England and they never cared for the welfare of the Indian. 
The petty firms and the landless labourers grown under the heavy taxes, not only by the Britishers but also the landlords and the money lenders. So the British followed a policy of economic exploitation, and the economic system was adjusted to the needs of the people in England. And number two, they were forced to grow jute and cotton for the factories in England. So the Indian people were forced to grow jute and cotton for the factories in England. Number three. Raw materials were exported to England at cheaper rates. Indian raw materials were exported to England at cheaper rates. Number four, good manufacturing in England were brought to India and sold at a higher prices. And a good manufacture in England were brought to India and they were sold at a higher prices. Number five, this policy ruined cottage industries, handicraftsmen and artisans began to starve. As their, as their means of livelihood. This have ruined a cottage industries, handicraftsmen, handicraftsmen and artisans began to starve their means of livelihood. Number six, the factory workers were exploited by the factory owners who were generally Englishmen. Effects of the Great Uprising of 1857 The Great Uprising of 1857 was crushed ruthlessly by the English Soldiers and English to mercilessly kill many Indian rebels and their leaders. Thereafter, the British began to suspect and doubt their loyalty and integrity. The Indians began to hate the British rule in India. This gave birth to new political consciousness and a general national awakening given rise to the national movement. Prior to the establishment of the British rule, India was divided into numerous states to different rulers and, and different administrative systems. People were loyal to their respective rulers and regions. They lack national outlook and identity. The British transformed a fragmented India into a united whole under their rule from the Himalayas to Cape, Cape Colony. They introduced a uniform and modern system of government throughout the British provinces. People from different provinces and communities were to follow the same laws and regulations. The British set up industries and trades. People from different parts of the country began to meet as they came to work in the factory, thereby spreading the feeling of nationalism to every nook and corner of the country and a feeling to abroad British imperialism from India. So the Great Uprising of 1857 was crushed ruthlessly by the English. Soldiers and English, too mercilessly, they killed many Indian rebels and their leaders. Uh, in the beginning of the British rule in India, India was divided into numerous states with different rulers and different administrative system. So they introduced a uniform and modern system of government throughout the British provinces. People from different provinces and communities were to follow the same laws and regulations. Repressive colonial policies the English followed a pressive policy against the Indians. Viceroys like Lytton, 1876-1880, Lord Kaizen, 1899-1905, took repressive measures against the Indians. Lord Lytton, by the Vernacular Press Act, put restriction on papers published in various Indian languages. Arms Act Under this act, Indians could not own and carry weapons without a license from the government. This act did not apply to Europeans. The age limit for candidates appearing for the Imperial Civil Services examination was reduced from 21 to 19. The chances of Indian candidates joining the civil services was greatly reduced with these laws. Partition of Bengal by Lord Curzon antagonized the Indians. The British officials used insults, abuse and assaulted them. This injured feelings of self-respect of the Indians consists of their humiliations and created a feeling of bitterness and a feeling of nationalism. So, so during the time of uh, British rule in India, uh, there was a restriction on paper published in the various Indian languages. And under the, Arm Act, under the Arms Act, uh, Indians could not own and carry weapons without the license from the government. So, but this was not applied to any Europeans, and the age limit for candidates appearing for the Imperial Civil Service examination was reduced from 21 to 19. And uh, 
the British official used insults, abuse, and assaulted them. This injured feelings of self-respect of the Indians consists of their humiliations and created a feeling of bitterness and a feeling of nationalism.